Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Minister Davis, you definitely don't need a new stylist. You just need a new speechwriter. Honorable members, let me start by condemning the inhuman living conditions of farm workers all over the country. We also condemn the senseless murders of farmers, including the family of four that was brutally murdered in Mpumalanga yesterday, because both of these incidents don't have a place in our democracy. However, we live in the era of false prophets and pastors. If they are not tricking people into eating grass, they are misleading congregants into using doom to receive blessings. One such false prophet was on this podium last week preaching the gospel of deception. Mr. Zuma is the modern day prophet Hananiah who we warned about in the book of Jeremiah. Every year he comes to this podium with a new scripture of false promises that he fails to fulfill. And just like the false prophet Hananiah who lied to the people of Judah that he was sent by the Lord to conquer Nebuchadnezzar, he is the master of deceit just like you. And it is only false prophets like Mr. Zuma who arrogantly tell religious leaders to stay out of politics, ignoring the contribution that they did to liberate this country. Yes, Honourable Member. Arousal Rule 14L. House Chair, when the Minister was speaking, you made the House go quiet so that we had to listen to him. You're allowing, you're allowing the House to make a lot of noise. In addition, the member behind the pillar there or from the ANC is repeatedly shouting sell out when the speaker is speaking. She's been warned about this before and I'm not going to allow members to again be subjected to being called strike mates, being told to F off and called dogs under your watch. I'd ask that she withdraws the word sell out and that you afford our speakers the same courtesy you've afforded to Minister Davies. Honorable uh, Stian Hazen, you must give us an opportunity to preside over the House and call on members and call, and call on members to be orderly. You don't have to push that down our throats, please. Uh, honorable, which, which, honorable member, I have warned you before that you mustn't scream. I will not tolerate it. If you do it again, it's not going to be nice. Honourable members, honourable, me honourable members, honourable members, there has to be order in the house. Let's not degenerate uh, this uh, proceedings. Uh, honourable member, who's been screaming uh, "sell out" to anyone here? Which honourable member is that? Deputy Speaker, it's Honourable Manaba at the back, right in front of the pillar over there. Honourable who? Manaba, the lady there in the corner next to the gentleman who's gesturing. Honorable Mlaba, please rise. Please rise. Honorable Mlaba, rise. Whoever said this, please rise. Let's hear. Deputy Speaker. It's the honourable member in front of the, of the marble pillar there. It's the same member who's been warned about this repeatedly in the House. Honourable members, uh, yeah. honourable member, what are you addressing me on? Yes. Please uh, sort out the sound system. Honourable members, please be quiet. Th th thank you, Honourable Deputy Speaker. I'm rising on a point of order that the opposition is forcing you to rule on the issue of sellouts. Last year, the leader of the opposition called the ANC members sellouts here, and there was no ruling around that. So we cannot have a new ruling today. Please. No, Honourable Member, no, 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 no. Honourable Member. If uh, I'm going to request that the whips attend to this matter, honourable member, if you do not, if you do not rise and you do not acknowledge this, it makes it very difficult for us. I do wish to appeal to you not to use language that is unparliamentary. Section 82 and 84 is explicit about that. If we do find that you've done it, honourable members, 
uh, we will come back to you. You are just uh, making it difficult for, for the House to run. Honourable uh, Malachi, please Deputy, Deputy Speaker. Yes, Honourable Member. Deputy Speaker, with respect, I have told you exactly who the member was that has said it. It's Honourable Manana at the back. She must stand up and you must ask her if she said it or not. Honourable Member, you heard me say that. You heard me say that. Honourable Members, Honourable Members, you heard me say that. And what happened? And what happened? Honourable Malachi, proceed. We will attend to this matter. Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker, with respect, when members of the opposition ignore the instructions of the presiding officers, you call in the white shirt and have us chucked out. Why is it acceptable for an ANC member to behave like that and defy your instruction? Honourable Members, Honourable Member, I ask you who it is. I call the name. The member has not responded to what I said. Which, me which, member, which member is that? Which member is that? Honourable Oliphant. Oliphant. Deputy Speaker, we yes, won't respond yes. to your instructions in future then. Honourable Oliphant. Uh, De Deputy Speaker, I'm afraid the Chief Whip of the DA is degenerating the House. And, and, and you are allowing it because, because, because he's imposing himself, he's disrupting the House, he's standing up without being recognized. They are shouting at the presiding officer and they think that we should sit here and just look at them. Shall we proceed with the proceedings of the House because you have ruled as such? Thank you very much. Honorable Members, Mutumpe Malat, Kiko Pautela Pilinda Dubu, Serinko Tila Katabena Kibuile Gayona, Akisa Kila Murao, Tela Pilumre. Deputy Speaker, may what I are address you? you? Thank what you. Are you if on? I may assist you, the row at the back, by the door, there's a lady with a yellow jacket. Do you see that lady? Do you see the lady with the glasses? Yellow jacket. Yes. Then there's a gentleman next to her. Yes. Do you see that gentleman? Then there's a lady next to him. That's a member who's called the Honourable Malatia a sellout. Now, Deputy Speaker, we've had rulings in this House by the Speaker. Honourable members, Honourable members, I have spoken on this matter. We are going to come back to it no. because I've requested that this matter be attended to by the rules. I have ruled on this, but if you want to keep going back, you are taking us but back. But Deputy Speaker, who's actually in charge here, you or the ANC members? If you think Can I'm in charge, some clarity? If, if I'm in charge, then you'd obey what I've said well, to you. Well, why don't the ANC Take members your seat obey member. you? Why don't the ANC members obey you? Honourable Member, Who's take in charge? Take your seat, Member. Well, certainly not you. Take your seat. Honourable Cronin, what are you raising on? Honourable Deputy Speaker, in addition to the matters, and we're winding ourselves up unnecessarily, I think it is very important also to determine whether use of a word like sellout is unparliamentary. We cannot cripple debate in this parliament by making everything unparliamentary. There's nothing wrong, surely, with a, a saying someone is a sellout. I've been accused of being a sellout plenty of times in this parliament, and I, I've not regarded it as unparliamentary, I've regarded it as inaccurate. So I think we must be very careful of not limiting the robust debate that necessarily occurs in a parliament by assuming that the word sellout is unparliamentary. Uh, honourable, honourable members, Deputy Speaker, I wish to. What are you raising on? On Rule member? 14P, if I may. Yes. That ruling has been made several times in the House that sellout is not regarded as parliamentary. Now, last year, the Honourable Robinson got chucked out for saying JZ783. And so you know, I think the Honourable Cronin must understand that there can't be two sets of rules in this House for the opposition and another set of rules for the ANC. And if you are going to allow that member to ignore you and just remain seated when you've asked him to stand, then what does it say about your authority in this House? Honourable Member, Honourable Stan Hazen, not only have I ruled, I have also ruled that we will come back to this matter. You have no right to keep... You have no right to keep coming back at me on this matter. Honorable Malachi Tsolapilumren. Remind me to tell you how you are. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. The Honorable Manana is a professional troll. Her greatest achievement is being a backbencher. But I would like to remind 
I would like to remind Mr. Zuma, just like the false prophet Hananiah did, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded the nation to trust in lies. Honorable members, as my leader, Mr. Maimani, said last week, it is deeply unjust that millions of black people remain dispossessed of the land where they were forcefully removed. Those forceful land dispossessions are not just apartheid scars. They represent lingering wounds that will make it difficult for all of us to live the dream of reconciliation. Because from generation to generation, many of us whose ancestors' land was dispossessed are overloaded with the heavy burden Why of the brief dignity of our people. Our grandparents are tenants on the land of their birth. Many young people are now squatters on the land of their ancestors. They don't have title deeds to affirm ownership of the properties they live in. And none of them are landlords on the land that was unfairly taken from them. Oh, the, the this, members. this is the lost generation that Mr. Zuma's government has created. And let us be very clear, it is not white monopoly capital or a third force or some fictional counter-revolutionary that has perpetuated this. It is the ANC's clumsy approach to land restitution that has done so. One such example is the Restitution of Land Rights Amendment Act of 2014 that was declared invalid by the Constitutional Court due to lack of proper consultation, as Mr. Zuma said in his address to the extended ANC caucus in this House. What Mr. Zuma didn't tell the House, though, was that the DA was one of the first parties to raise concerns about the validity of the public process of the bill. Yet once again, the ANC used its majority to defy sanity by bulldozing the bill through parliamentary processes. So while Parliament will now need additional resources and additional time to correct yet another ANC error, land restitution continues to move at a tortoise pace. If you scrutinize every land restitution settlement in the country, you'll find one common factor. And that common factor is that there is an ANC cadre at the center of robbing the real beneficiaries. The most recent one is Minister Nkwinti here, who has abused his position to facilitate the transfer of the Bjerg and Flay farm to his Chomis at Lutuli house. This is despite the fact that neither of them have any ancestral claim to the land, nor experience in agriculture. Because to the ANC, they would rather put friends first and young people and South Africans last. So now we have the ANC lamenting the fact that many beneficiaries prefer cash instead of land. However, Honorable Deputy so Chair. Yes. Honorable Mufatsi, please take your seat. Yes, Honorable Mufatsi. Do so. It is by convention in this parliament that when you raise an issue about a member, it must come through a substantive motion. So Honorable Nguyenti has just said yesterday that this issue is referring to, was referred to the public protector. I think that you must protect the Honorable Minister. Thank you. That's correct. Deputy Speaker. That's correct. Deputy Speaker, yeah, that's before correct. you rule, can I ask what rule uh, the member is referring to? Honorable Member, Honorable Malati. Uh, Honorable Malati. Deputy Speaker, any, may I address any, you before you any, rule? No. Deputy oh, Speaker. Let me rule. Because there's conventions in this House that we have rules. Yeah. Where if you call a member to stand up and apologize, they do yeah. so and listen to your authority. Yeah. That convention's been thrown out the window, and so is this one. We do not recognize you as the chair. Yes, you. you. Uh, Honorable, Honorable Malati. Point of order. No, no, no. Honorable member. You are honorable member. Honorable yes. Deputy Speaker. What are you rising on? I rise in accordance with Rule 14G to say that the utterances of the member of the opposition is actually uh, in contempt of the authority of the chair. And I want you to rule on it. Uh, Honourable Honourable Malachi. Honourable Malachi. Uh, raising uh, raising issues that imputes on another member of the house needs to be done appropriately. In in what you said about the minister Nkwinti, you impute wrong motives. Can we uh, have you withdraw that? Deputy Speaker. Please may I understand what rule in the rule book you're relying on, because I think you're confusing the National Assembly rules with the joint rules that you should be applying in a Honourable, joint sitting. Honourable, that is the rule of the National Assembly. Honourable, it's not a rule of a joint sitting. Honourable members, the, the, the principle behind that rule applies to the joint rules. The principle applies is the same. 
Honorable member, proceed, react. Yes, honorable, mini, honorable member, what's the rule? What are you rising on? Yes, Deputy Speaker, I wanted to actually rise on the matter you have just ruled on. Yes, ma'am. You've been asked what rule we're referring to in terms of joint rules. And the rule you're referring to is Rule 12 in the joint rules on discipline, specifically 12A. Thank you. Honorable Deputy Speaker. Yes. Honorable Member. Deputy Speaker. Honorable Member. It's a point of order. Rule 12 relies to the, on the discipline. It's not for the rules of debate. There are two schedules to the rules. Honorable one member. about the rules of debate, one of rules of discipline. And, it refers, and it refers to who has the authority to discipline members of the NA. Honorable Perhaps member. the Honorable Member has been here too long. She's forgotten. Honorable Member. Honorable uh, Malachi, uh, I request that you please proceed. Honorable Malachi, I am requesting you, sir, please, to... Honorable Malachi, I requested you to withdraw your impute, wrong impute. Deputy Honorable Speaker, Member. Deputy Speaker, the ANC member didn't withdraw the word sellout, so why you Honorable Member. Malachi withdraw? Honorable Malachi. The DA, not Honorable, the ANC. Honorable Member, you did say you don't recognize the chair. The chair will not recognize you too. Honorable Malachi, please withdraw. Honorable Member, we should not impute improper motives on other members or cast aspersions on their integrity as members or verbally abuse them. Honorable Member, I have requested you to withdraw. If you do not, that's your choice, Honorable Member. You do have a choice. Proceed. Many do so because the ANC government fails to Honorable Member, system. you can't proceed without reacting to my request to you. Yes, what's your choice? I must know your choice. You are not withdrawing. Then, Honorable Member, I'm afraid uh, you, uh, you can't proceed without uh, withdrawing. Honorable Member, Deputy Speaker, are, I'm of the view that you are um, uh, now acting and disobeying the ruling of the chair. How do you intend to proceed? Point of order, chair. Honorable Member, Manana must withdraw first. No, you know what the question is. Deputy Speaker. You answer it. Deputy Speaker. Yes, Honorable Member. Deputy Speaker, may I ask you to please consider this later, like you've agreed to do with the Honourable Banana? Because I, I would really ask that I would really ask that you consult with the NA table before making this ruling. You've, the Speaker threw out one of our members last week for saying something that she regarded as unparliamentary, which clearly was not unparliamentary. These allegations were on the front page of the Sunday newspapers. You cannot tell me that the newspapers have more freedom of speech in this House than members of this Parliament. This is widely distributed in the public domain. Honourable and member. I think that you're restricting a member's right to debate and freedom okay. of speech in this right. House, okay. and you're treading on very dangerous ground. All right, Honourable as Member. Usual. Okay, Honourable Member, when, we, when the Constitution says that the House, um, when it conducts its affairs, must be mindful of its provisions, that it too has a right to run its own affairs. The rules and the constitution guide this. The rules that requires of us to act with discipline, with order, uh, with respect to one another, are our rules, honorable members, they are not mine, they are the house's rules, and when we request you to obey them, uh, let's do that. Honorable member, I request uh, that you, because you said it in front of me and I heard you, and I request that you withdraw that if you want to proceed 
with your uh, proceeding. Can I have your... Withdraw or no, ma'am? No, withdraw. Okay, can we shut down? Many do so Deputy because Speaker. the ANC government Deputy tends Speaker. to provide... Sorry to interrupt. Mm. Deputy Honorable Speaker, member. may I be recognized, please? Yes. I would like to request that your ruling Deputy is Speaker. referred to Deputy the Rules Speaker. Committee for Deputy review. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Deputy Member, Speaker. please proceed. Honorable Speaker. Yes. Honorable, Honorable Deputy Speaker. In terms Speaker. of uh, the joint rule, 14G. No, honourable member. Because that the member to withdraw. If the member refuses to withdraw, in terms of 14G, the member must go out of the house. In no. terms of the rule of joint rules. No, out of order. Out of order. Yes, honourable member. What are you raising on? Honourable deputy speaker. I think the practice. Honourable members, the member has withdrawn. Yes, Honourable Member, what are you raising on? Honourable Deputy Speaker, it seems as if the Opposition Chief Whip has the authority to stand up and interject whenever he pleases. It seems as if, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Deputy that he's entitled to be belligerent and boorish in terms of how he speaks to people. It seems as if he has the unfettered authority to undermine Speaker, the authority the that is vested in you Deputy as the Minister chief work, and that is precisely what they are doing what's now. What's the point of they order? Not allowing what's the point of order, Deputy Speaker? Order. Order. What is the member, point of order? Honourable member, take your seat. What is the point no, of order? No, there's a point of order. Honourable Chief, I'm listening. What is it? What rule? Take your seat. Honourable Chief, which rule? That it is precisely this. No, Honourable Member, the rules apply to you and me. What rule are you standing on? Honourable Member, Honourable Waters, when when members Don't assume the that. authority of the chair, this is precisely what they are trying to do: is to undermine and subvert the authority of the chair. The point of order that I raise, Honourable Chairperson, is that you have the authority Deputy vested Speaker? in you, and again, uh, which rule is the Deputy Minister standing on? You are doing on? it again, okay? What, what rule is he standing on? What rule are you standing on? I'm asking you what, what rule he's standing what on. What rule are you standing on? 1G. 1G. Honourable yeah, Member, take G. your seat. He's standing, he's standing on Tower, the please. Member. He's standing without any authority, any knowledge, or any respect for the decorum yeah, of the Tower, the please. And the point of order that I make, Honourable Chairperson, is that the authority and the discretion vested in you as a chairperson and presiding officer cannot be undermined by any member and you have the unfettered discretion of, uh, of, of, of basically setting the matter right. I appeal to the court that you do so. Honourable members, Speaker. the requirements is that you mention the rule or the principle you are addressing. Honourable members, let's proceed. Honourable member, proceed. So today we have the ANC lamenting the fact that many beneficiaries prefer cash instead of land. However, many do so because the ANC government fails to provide consistent after-settlement support to beneficiaries to enable them to make productive use and sustainable agricultural use of the land. So once again, it is not white monopoly capital, it is not a third force honorable member, and it is not counter-revolutionaries that do this. It is the ANC. It is you who continues to inflict assault on the dignity of our people through your mishandling of land reform. Honourable members, it makes no sense whatsoever why beneficiaries of government housing have to wait for long periods to get their title deeds once they've been handed their houses. These delays in giving them title deeds prolongs their stay in poverty when they could be leveraging their properties for economic prosperity. This is why where the DA governs, we prioritise the speedy handover of title deeds to empower our people. And this is why the city of Cape Town has handed over more title deeds than any other metro between the 2013 financial year and the 2015 financial years. And this is why Cape Town has eradicated the backlog of historic title deeds for transfer to residents in Nyanga, Langa and Guguletu. So while Mr Zuma and his family are secure in comfort through the proceeds of corruption, millions of young people, millions of young South Africans are insecure in the discomfort of poverty. 
and it is these young people who are the lost generation that will vote the ANC out of office in 2019. Because to the ANC, service delivery is a once-off show voting crusade to seduce voters. Every time there are elections and by-elections, ANC Honorable municipalities... Honorable take your seat, please. What are you raising, Honourable Member? No, I'm raising on a point of order, uh, Deputy Speaker, that uh, a member make a serious allegation that uh, the President is benefiting on corruption. And I think it's unparliamentary, therefore, that we rule out of order. It cannot yes. be. It cannot be. It's not allowed. It's unparliamentary. Can't yes. do that. Thank you. Honourable Member, confirm that. Is that what you said? I said allegedly. Allegedly. Sorry? Honourable members, we have in the past made the following rulings in the House. And I'm just going back to the same thing. Accusations against a member or personal reflections on a member's integrity are equally offensive and damaging if they are made by way of inference, by way of hypothesis, through a quotation, by being posed as a question, or by utilizing other figures of speech or literary devices. It is inappropriate to cast aspersions on anyone, honorable member, and if you did so, we request you to withdraw. Um, with, with due respect, uh, Deputy Speaker, I didn't. I just feel these are time-delaying tactics to disrupt my speech. I didn't. What are you saying, honorable member? I, I said the, inter the points of order are just time-delaying tactics to interrupt my speech. I didn't. I didn't impugn his dignity or said anything that hasn't been said in this house. Point of order, uh, honourable members. Honourable, honourable member, what? Why are you raising, honourable member? According to Rule 14G, once a member is directed by uh, the presiding speaker what to do, the member has to oblige. Yes. Honourable members, honourable member. Honourable deputy speaker. I have honour Honourable Member, I have uh, indicated to you my request to you. We will, we, Honourable Member, we, we will look at Hansard and we'll come back to you and the ruling will stand. Honourable Members, I do warn you from the podium or from the sides, if you continue in the way in which you are doing, uh, we will have to review our attitude towards allowing any of that um, without recourse. It is appropriate that we follow the rules and not pretend we don't know what they are and what they say. Proceed, Honourable Member. But as soon as elections are over, service delivery returns to its unpredictable state. The ANC provides factional service delivery. Those who didn't vote for them are punished for voting for the opposition. Where the DA governs, service delivery is not a tool for bipartisanship. It is an instrument to restore and sustain the dignity of our people throughout our term of office. Where the ANC governs, they do so with the hubris because they don't respect voters. It is the same hubris that Mr. Zuma's false prophecy that the ANC will govern till Jesus comes. Where the DA governs, we do so with the humility that an opportunity to govern is a privilege of the highest order to serve our people. Where we govern, we do so with the compassion of a caring government, unlike the ANC that refuses a mere moment of silence to commemorate the tragic loss of 94 lives that were killed under an ANC government. Where the DA governs, we condemn corruption wherever it happens. We punish its perpetrators and we don't victimize whistleblowers. whistleblowers. Where the ANC governs, they protect corrupt cadres. Some are even elevated to parliament and they are on these benches. However, Speaker, even if no government is perfect, nor will it ever be, any government that respects the oath of public service will acknowledge its wrongdoings where they exist, it will apologize for its misdeeds, and it will self-correct all the time. Where the DA governs, we try to live up to these ideals all the time. And while the ANC can try its misfiring attempts to destabilize DA governments in the metros, you will never succeed against the will of the people. You try to unsettle the DA government in the Western Cape through Operation Reclaim, and you failed. You try to take over Midfall through an illegal merger with the Influenza municipality, and you failed. You tried 
but you keep trying to abuse the powers of national governments to frustrate DA governments and still you fail. You are the most consistent failures who try to disrupt DA governments. And it is because you will never ever stop an idea whose time has come. And this is the time that voters have chosen for the DA to govern. We are governing in Cape Town, we are governing in Midval, we are governing in Tswani, we are governing in Nelson Mandela Bay, and we are governing in Johannesburg. And whether you like it or not, we are governing there. So not even the doomed gospel of the ANC's false prophets will stop us from taking over the union buildings in 2019 because this is the time that the voters have chosen. And no matter how many times you try to use the power of might, it can never win over right because evil never conquers good. And the time has come where voters have realized the misdeeds of the ANC government and they have said, this is the time for the DA to govern. Thank you, Chair. Akbar Rahim Nawalch.